Hey Taurus, welcome to your Soulful Tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, my name is Kim. I'm from the Birth of Venus Tarot here on YouTube. You can easily find me there for all other zodiac sign readings, mystery readings, and all that good stuff. But this is a space I created just for the Taurus Collective. So if you've been subscribing, watching, um, liking, listening. Thank you so much. This channel is such a safe space for me. It is a treat to record for you a lot more often. So thank you. You know, the readings are meant to be received. So your reciprocity means everything. Your receptivity means everything. Uh, so thank you. Okay, I felt called to show up for you guys today because I, I received a few messages. I took a lot of notes also. And the bigger message today was about fear. It's like Spirit is saying, Taurus, yes, it's supposed to be scary. And you're going to make it anyway. Everything's going to be fine. You're going to be totally fine regarding this thing that scares you, that you know you have to do, you feel called to do. And also another message connected to that was, it makes sense that you're trying to find value in this thing that scares you. You know, humans, this is something that we do. When we are truly afraid of something, we're going to find ways to add value to this thing, add meaning to this thing. And the best example, of course, is you know, death. Let's, let's just be real here. It's like, um, of course, I'm not saying that this is in any way connected to your reading or your energy, but sometimes the things that scare us the most, um, it's essential for us to find value in them. So there's something here very scary that it's not that you're forcing yourself to do it. You just know it's supposed to happen. It's uncomfortable. It's like you're putting yourself in, in, in this uncomfortable position, but there is so much value there. This is probably the entry point to new abundance and to this new beginning that we've been talking about for a while here on the channel, especially in the last reading, how new doors are opening. But sometimes you have to find this door, you know, and sometimes you have to build the freaking door. So anyway, let's dive in. Let's, okay, five of pentacles. Yeah, I told you this is uncomfortable. For some of us, it's going to be about asking for help. There could also be something connected to the body, you know, some type of surgery that you have to do. For example, um... This is not a surprise in any way. This is something that you know you've been kind of pushing away. Um, you know you'll feel better after. You know it's supposed to be uncomfortable. It is connected to this learning, learning experience. And what's happening here, the growth and the balance, especially, that you're finding after this, it's amazing. And again, the entry point of a new perspective, a new beginning, it is necessary for you to go through that door. Um, five of Pentacles is a Taurus card and it is uncomfortable. All the fives in the tarot are connected to a contraction. It's not permanent. But when we are brave enough to ask for help, you know, almost all the Five of Pentacle cards in all decks, you can see people here. And there's the window, there's help here, there's this solution, there's this door. And it's like, if only you would be brave enough to say, hey, I need help or I have to do this, I'm doing this. You wouldn't be standing here alone in the cold. And I'm not saying that it's your fault if you're feeling like those two, those, you know, the folks here. It's not about that. No one is blaming you. And I know that you're definitely 
you know, you're blaming yourself enough um, as is for certain things. So it's not about the blame. It's not about the pressure. It's something that you know in your heart is supposed to be done. And it is scary. And spirit wants to send a confirmation that you're supposed to feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, it's part of this process. So what is it for you? Is it, you know, again, something connected to the health of your body, the physical self? Is it asking for help? Finally, reaching out to someone saying, I need help. I need to work on this thing. Maybe some of you guys are wanting to go back to school or are wanting to do this big new thing. It could be connected to some type of energetical graduation. I see the green light. I feel like this is a yes. So this message of feel the fear and do it anyway. Fear is not a warning. Fear is actually a good sign. It means that your nervous system is like, hey, change is happening. I don't like that. The soul is happy. That's why you can't stop thinking about this. That's why... Even if it's scary, you still feel like this is necessary for your evolution. Okay, Eight of Cups is here. So this is a confirmation that once you go through that door, that scary door, you're going to be totally changed after. The Eights and the Tarot, we go in a certain way and we come out of them completely changed. Notice how the eights in the tarot are so different from the nines. Yeah, because we go through them and we completely change. If you remember the nine of cups, the card that comes right after the eight of cups, you know, there's the wish, there's the, the feeling of accomplishment. But here we have something uncomfortable. We have to walk away. We have to do this thing. We have to put ourselves in this uncomfortable position our nervous system, especially our egos, are fighting this. The ego wants to stay comfortable in the same place. And the soul is craving expansion. It really is. Okay. So with the Eight of Cups, there's an ending here. There's moving on. Letting go of fear. This is a very emotional card. And look at that. Judgment card is here. So the moment you go through that door, the moment you're able to hold fear's hand, to feel it and do it anyway, look at that. The judgment card is here. So we get to this new clear path. So it's interesting how this feels like a challenging energy happening just before this new beginning that we've been talking about. It's so interesting. It's like fragments of this energy wanting to come through, not in specific orders. It's, it's very interesting for me as a reader to honor those messages um, fully, you know, full transparency. Okay. People are not going to understand. I think this is why the judgment card is here, Taurus. Because the shift, it's been happening for a very long time internally. It's your inner world. It's your secret garden. You're not necessarily sharing everything that you're learning about yourself. Everything that's coming through constantly, through learning, through experiences and challenges. There's a lot that you're keeping private. Eight of Cups, of course, connected to Pisces. It is connected to our inner world, our inner life. So all the nurturing you've been doing in, in this inner life, again, the secret garden, it's no news for you. It's kind of old news. But the world, the, the external, the people around you are not going to understand. Their reaction is going to be like, okay, Taurus changed their mind again. Oh, wow. Taurus is doing a big move now. 
what's happening. They changed their mind. And you're like, uh, yeah, I changed my mind. I'm supposed to change. And actually, this shift has been happening for so long. So the way that people perceive you here is so different than your reality. And you're going to have to detach from that judgment. Because the judgment card is a lot of the times about judgment. How others judge us, how we judge ourselves, and how we judge other people. It can work like a mirror in that way. Because when we're obsessing over someone and judging them, usually it's a mirror here. Usually there's projection and there's something about us that we need to take care of. We need to address. So, yeah, Seven of Swords is here. Sevens in the tarot are very connected to the external. How sometimes we just want to be understood. This is what's coming up, Taurus. And it, it's going to make me emotional. I feel like there's a wave coming up. It's not necessarily that you're wanting to be everyone's favorite or you're wanting to be loved by everyone you want to be understood there's something about your magic your sensitivity and just again this inner life that you've been cultivating there's so much beauty there and a part of you is like that's such a shame that people are not seeing that part of me and I don't want to fight I don't want to prove anything it's not my job to prove this so i have to focus on again still cultivating this inner life still nurturing myself showing myself love and compassion and slowly but surely breaking up fully with the need to prove yourself to others to be validated by others and that's hard that's hard because the Taurus energy is, I have. This is our motto. And it's not just because we love material. We love, of course, beauty. Taurus is connected to what we eat, what we smell, you know, what we taste, see, hear, what we touch, all of those things, all the senses, all the sensations. So we love things. But... There's so much more to us. And it's not just about wanting material and wanting that cash and wanting um, all things. There's a part of it, of course. But we want, as a collective, and this is something... I feel, and I know a lot of Taurus also shared with me that they feel, we want our inner world, our inner beauty to shine through. A lot of us sometimes feel very different on the inside than how we are on the outside. It's like we're trying to prove to ourselves so many things, trying to prove to ourselves that we are strong, that we can accomplish so many things, that we are compassionate and loving and beautiful and sometimes it's it's starting to feel like a fight it's an inner battle that we feel like we cannot win and I feel like sometimes people can feel that and we get very uncomfortable very activated when people are analyzing us when people are judging us and comparing and all those things I feel like there's a lot of comparing here. And I don't know if it's someone in your life who always... They want to prove you something or they, they compare themselves to you and it feels like a race. This is how it's wanting to come through. It's like it could be a friend, a family member... There is someone who constantly is trying to prove you that they're better in a way. I don't know. There's a, there's a race here and you're like, I'm not participating in that race. I'm focusing on my own paper, my own journey, my inner life. 
So what are you doing? And as much as you're trying to not care and detach from this energy, it really annoys you. It impacts you. It has this influence. It's like, it's, it's annoying. I don't know why I'm feeling like someone is annoyed by another person. I'm trying to love you so much. I, I want to be your friend. I want you to be in my life. But why are you always trying to prove something? Why are, why are you competing with me? This is not a competition. This is not a fight. This is a dance. We move together. We evolve together. And we can share that experience with each other. But it's always about them proving that they have more okay okay there's something here wow i don't know who i'm connecting with but that's a lot and the star card is here the deepest healing energy in the tarot so whoever you're challenged by right now again if you're connecting to this message this person that's always competing or they look like you know you feel like they are competing who knows maybe that's just your perception your perspective but this is connected to your healing journey remember the traditional version of the star card there is a naked woman there pouring water one feet on the ground one feet in the water and it's so important anytime you see a naked body in the tarot you know that there's this detachment from the material again from this i have i'm not so focused on what i have in the material world, I am, I want to be, I want to feel, I want to experience things. So here there's this detachment, again, with the Ace of Swords, this new perspective. And I'm getting a very powerful message here. Um, for anyone who's struggling with body image, anyone who's trying to accept their body as is, spirit is saying, Taurus, your body is a fragment of who you are. Actually, your body is the least interesting thing about you. It's just a fragment of who you are. Please remember that. So there's something here about, again, the physical, the material, this energy of I have transforming slowly into I am, I feel, I receive. Okay, okay. You're healing very deep wounds at the moment. Tending to very, very deep wounds, very deep cuts. And that's very uncomfortable. That could be what this uncomfortable thing is. And it's not a race. It's not a race. It's not a fight. It's a dance. And when we dance, sometimes we make mistakes. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall. We're going to try again, get up and try again constantly. It's part of this process. You're not supposed to get it right the first time. You're supposed to never give up. And it's going to take as long as it takes. Okay, wow, there's a lot coming through Taurus. And we have the King of Swords at the heart of this reading. And the general energy, Ace of Swords. So the King of Swords is holding that sword. Not only you have a new perspective, not only there's this new beginning. Again, we've been talking about that for a while. Um, it's like you're holding this truth with such bravery. Again, slicing through the illusion of I have to look a certain way. I have to make that amount of money, I have to be like this, I have, you don't have to anything. You are complete as is right now. And the king of swords is using the sword of his mind, of his logic, his intelligence, all the lessons he's been learning, and he's slicing through the extra. All the non-essential is being cleared out of your life right now. Again, think about the the star card in this naked person. It's like the non-essential has been cleared out. Now it's you, your vessel. 
So I think that this could be connected to the body, definitely with the Five of Pentacles. I felt it in the first few seconds of this reading, you know, when I said, oh, it could be about surgery, body, and then the Ace of Swords, and that was just an example. But it's like, it's connected to the physical and how you're detaching from, from this, uh, this need to please, to be validated for what you have, for how you look. This inner life, it wants to shine through now. It wants to shine through and it is about to shine through with the star. It really is. Also judgment card, it's about something being excavated, something coming up to the surface. You're on the right track, Taurus. And I feel like a lot of us are needing to hear that right now. Because again, when we are, when we are Taurus or when we are connected very deeply to that energy, the way we start believing that things are happening is when we can see them, we can touch them. This, this I have motto is so important and it is here to help us understand certain things. We have King of Pentacles. So yeah, you are stepping into King energy like no one's business. Like you are 100% King energy, especially I would say around the month of May, around your birthday, end of April. Kings in the tarot are the full grown tree. And they're not perfect. You know, they're going to make a lot of mistakes in the future. They're still learning. You know, if you think about the fact that in every good teacher, there is still a student, what makes a good teacher is actually their willingness to learn more. And I always felt like, you know, when I worked with um, tarot teachers and spiritual workers and things like that, it's like the moment I noticed that they are believing that they know it all or they cannot learn anything else or if they don't have that curiosity, that vulnerability, I'm not interested anymore. I'm interested in real people who are making mistakes and learning from them. And I said that in another reading this week, um, not here, I don't think so, but it's important we remember that making mistakes, that's making us more valuable as people. And sometimes we believe that the more we fail, and the harder life is, it's like the less valuable we are. And that's not true. That's all the ego comparing to other people. Especially that we have direct access to so many celebrities and people that are only showing the best of themselves online. Of course we feel like we're not good enough. Even if it's not the truth. Even if in our hearts, in our soul, we know that we are good enough. We know that we have this magic, this inner life that is so powerful. All the things that we know, that we feel, it's so potent, it's so magical, but yet we compare to people that we see online and we have no idea what they're going through. And we know we are intelligent enough to know that they curate, like they choose what they show online. You know, filming just a corner of their house and it looks so perfect. And there's a lot about the perspective here that's changing. It's like all the things that you know and that you've known for a long time, now you're actually applying them in your life. The lessons, the teachings, that's what kings do. They practice what they preach. They show up in the world with a heart of service, with experiences. Um, but they still make mistakes. And again, they understand the value of making mistakes. And we have the hangman here, of course. Of course, Neptune is going to show up this very uncertain energy. <sighs> The hangman is the rebel of the tarot. 
And that's why I love this card so much. I know a lot of people don't like the imagery and that's totally fine. Even just the name of this card is a little scary. Um, but the hangman chose to be in that position. And everyone around him must feel very uncomfortable, like, what are you doing? But this is necessary, again, to have this vulnerability to get uncomfortable in order to change. The hangman is connected to a shift in perspective. And for my yoga folks out there, because I do, I've been doing yoga every day for you know, probably 20 years now. Um, this is what I love about yoga, you know, when you have your head upside down and you have this new perspective. And I heard that one time, uh, a very old yoga teacher said that he was like, this is why we do yoga, because we want a different perspective, we want our head upside down. And it really happens when I do yoga, I have a new perspective. If I go to my yoga mat, and I have something that bothers me, I'm gonna have a brand new perspective when I'm done with my session because I moved my body, because again, I, I put myself in this position. So the hangman reminds me a lot of yoga practice. And of course you don't have to do yoga, you don't have to be a yoga practitioner in any way. It's just like, it's an example for you to understand how our bodies, are so connected to our minds and it's so important. Here we have the body, five of pentacles, and we have the mind with the ace of swords. There's always this connection, king of swords, king of pentacles. This reading is so connected to the mind and body and how both influence each other. And when we get that connection, when we are able to listen to what our body wants. I feel like everything is shifting. And sometimes it's good to just like shake, shake the energy a little bit. It's not necessarily about having this yoga practice or training a certain way. Sometimes I just love to get up on my feet and I start shaking. And I know it sounds weird and I kind of force my husband to do that when he's been gaming on the computer for a while or when he's been sitting for a long time. I'm like, just get up and move the energy around. And there's something here. It's like, it's always been in you, this energy, this magic, this knowing, but it's like, you need to shake it a little, a little bit. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's getting up to your brain and your perspective is shifting. And you're like, wow. I see clearly now why I had to get so uncomfortable, why it was so scary in the first place. There's so much clarity here. Again, Ace of Swords, King of Swords. The clarity that comes from this shift, is it's out of this world. It's very exciting to me, actually, as a reader to see that and as a Taurus myself. And the star card is here. And in the last reading, I talked a lot about hope. How hope is an act of radical self-love. To keep hoping when we've been hurt, challenged. I think it's the most powerful thing. I am still hopeful, even if I was betrayed. Even if I was lied to. It doesn't mean that I'm just going to forgive everyone who hurts me. It's not about them. It's not about them. Again, seven of swords. It's like, stop. They're not the problem. It's not about them. It's time that you focus again as much as you can on your inner life. Nine of pentacles is here. Knight of Pentacles, and we have the Ten of Swords. I have an extra card, but I'm going to honor that. Interesting that we have the Ten of Swords as the last card of this pull, and here we have the Ace. So, again, this uncomfortable energy, it's not permanent. It's going to shift so fast. I feel like it's going to be like a, a moment of pain or fear. An instant, and then there's all this release. 
you show up in the world much more comfortable than who you are, much more secure. Nine of Pentacles is maturity. It's when we make decisions considering our future self. And I'm never going to shut up about that because it is such an important message. You know, like, I'm sure we can all think of ways that we've been treating our bodies in unhealthy ways throughout our lives. Not that we necessarily have regret, but there are many things that I did to my body that I'm I have a different perspective on today, you know, I have tattoos being one of the first thing. And, you know, that's that's very personal to me, but and it's just an example for you to understand. But like I started getting tattoos very early in my life. And now that I'm about to turn 35, there are, you know, Certain things that I regret doing to my body. I cannot believe I put my body through so, so much pain. I'm heavily tattooed. And sometimes when I just stop and think about it, I'm like, wow, I'm so sorry, body. This is so much pain. No way I'm getting laser. No way I'm, I'm putting my body through more pain. Because I understand now why I've done certain things, why I treated my body a certain way. So this idea of maturity, I wasn't mature. I wasn't making decisions considering my future self. I did not care. I needed to feel empowered. I needed to feel like I was reclaiming my body, my authority. And today, it's like I have this constant reminder of that. And I have to do deeper work to love my body as is, you know? And that's so superficial. It's just, again, an example I'm doing. Like some folks have real scars that they did not choose to have. Like I chose every tattoo. Like that, th those were my decisions. Some people don't have all their body parts. Again, they have scars that they did not choose to, to get. So... We have to be aware of that, how lucky we are just to be able to be here together in this virtual space and talking about those things. That's such privilege. And I'm always aware of that. Um, Knight of Pentacles is here. And the Knights in the Tarot are connected to how we move. They're connected to movement. And if you... Do a tarot reading for yourself or if you're trying to find some type of direction, always find the knights in the tarot because they are a tarot hack. It's like they show you what you should be focusing on. And here, again, the body. Are you present? Are you moving in the world aligned with your values? Are you able to notice, to feel into something before rushing um, Knight of Pentacle takes his time. He receives an invitation. He's going to feel it in his body. He's going to take the time to think about it. He's never going to rush a yes, a no. He's not impulsive. He's careful. He's the smooth operator. This is how I call the Knight of Pentacles. If you know, uh, you know, one of the best songs ever, Smooth Operator from uh, Say, I think, yeah. Uh, this is it. It's like you're so careful with how you treat yourself and others and everything is impacted by that in a beautiful way. So maybe some of us are invited to notice like when we are impulsive, when are we disappointing ourselves because we're just rushing into something I need this thing right now. I need to buy this right now. Again, it's all about comparing because when we are rushing something like that, usually it's because we feel like we have to prove something to ourselves or to, to another person. Here, we are breaking up with the need to be validated and we find that validation within ourselves. 
working on probably rewriting our inner stories and again cultivating our inner life um which is something i'm very passionate about and to me it's it's very connected to the queens in the tarot so i'm it's very interesting that the kings are here this tells me that we know all of this and there's clearly cycles here. We have the Ace of Swords, the Ten of Swords. It's like there's this cycle that keeps repeating. We learn lessons, but we don't apply them. And then we judge ourselves, we blame ourselves, and we stay stuck. And then there's shame and there's fear, and we just don't want to get uncomfortable anymore. We just want to stay safe in the same place. But we're sabotaging ourselves. So now... We're learning to befriend our inner saboteur, our inner critique, and say, okay, I get why you're here. I get why you're doing all those things. I hear you, but I know it's not the truth. I know it's my ego, my nervous system, activating to make sure that I'm safe. Okay, let's pick some oracle card, Taurus. Taurus. Okay, I'm hearing one oracle card and one tarot card. Okay. Okay, we have this one here. Let me pick another tarot card for from another tarot deck. What is this card trying to say? What is the tarot card that wants to come through for Taurus? Is there something, a message that we need to hear in this moment? Okay, sun at the bottom of the deck, of course. We are walking towards the sun slowly but surely. This whole year feels that way. We have justice card and the well of grief. This is one of my favorite cards. This is the deck of sacred rhythm that I co-created um, earlier this year. And the well of grief is one of my favorite poems. If you've ever read it you, you probably understand why um i'll pin it on top of the comments section if ever you want to read this fabulous poem the well of grief make room for difficult feelings give yourself time there's something here about a new perspective a, f a completely new perspective when it comes to all the things that you've been through, all the ways in which you have suffered uh, and been challenged in your life. You know, when I think about the will of grief, I think about looking into a well and seeing all of those things, but you are secure. You are able to look from afar and have this, this 360 vision. It's not just, okay, is it black or white? Is it good or bad? Is it left or right? No, it's it's a 360 vision. It's like you can see the whole thing. You have a different perspective now when it comes to everything, really. That's the thing. It's not just one thing. It's so much about you that is shifting and changing. And you don't owe anyone an explanation. Again, there's going to be judgment. People are not going to understand you're going to hear things like Taurus changed our mind again. You're so undecisive. And the justice card is here. You know, I think that sometimes when we are undecisive, it's because we really want the best for ourselves. I used to blame myself constantly for that personally. I don't know for you, but, you know, I'm a Taurus sun with a Scorpio rising. So, you know, almost all of my chart is fixed. It's... I. I change my mind constantly and I, I got blamed a lot for that and I blame myself also and actually now I see the value in that I'm like well I really care about myself I really want the best for myself and for the people around me so of course I'm going to be like unsure and changing my mind recalibrating gauging what's the best decision for me that's the thing with the justice card it's like how can everyone win and can we remember that we can only gauge that we are supposed to make mistakes to grow and evolve? That mistakes are not taking any of our value away to actually 
makes us more valuable as people, as humans. So the justice card says everyone wins here. It's not about them. Take that out of your, your vocabulary, literally saying like, well, this person is that and it's because of my parents and it's because of this and it's because of that. Today, in this moment, it's time you reclaim your power. Stop giving your power away. Are you blaming other people for, you know, suffering and for heartbreaks and all those things? It's not that you want to blame you. You just don't need to point fingers. You don't need to compare. The work is internal. This whole reading is connected to your inner life, how sacred it is. Don't give your power away by judging, pointing fingers. Everyone wins here. There is a possibility where everyone wins and it feels good when we're not giving our power away. And again, it's like, this whole year feels like a very long road and we're walking towards the sun and there's going to be bumps in the roads and there's going to be many doors, some that we have to build, some that we have to shut, <laughs> some that we have to open and see. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I'm sending so much love, Taurus. It's always just such a pleasure, a treat for me to, to read uh, for this collective. So thank you so much for listening. Um, and I'll talk to you guys very soon.